Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'm Dr. Morales. In today's video segment, we're going to be discussing why is atrial fibrillation growing? Why are more and more people getting atrial fibrillation? And if you think that this video is something that is worthwhile, something that somebody else can learn from, please throw me a like or a comment or share because that's how these ideas grow. So in this segment, we're going to be talking about why is atrial fibrillation growing? And some recent estimates, um, I believe it was 2014, the estimates were over 30 million people across the world have atrial fibrillation. Every day it is growing. Every day there are more people being diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. And this is a question that I frequently get, even recently on our Facebook group. Uh, somebody was asking, why are more and more people getting atrial fibrillation? And I, when people ask me this question, I usually tell them, well, it's... Um, the consequences of increasing AFib are good and bad, and let me explain why I say it in that way. Uh, there are several risk factors for developing AFib which are increasing. One of the most common reasons, or one of the most common risk factors for developing atrial fibrillation is advanced age. Uh, as people get to the ages of 70 and 80 years old, uh, the significance or the amount of people having atrial fibrillation increases dramatically. And if you see a graph of age and atrial fibrillation, it's a significant increase as people reach 70 and 80 years old. And now, thanks to modern medicine, there are more people living healthy, active lives at 70 and 80 years old than were ever before. So there's more people at those age ranges now than ever before which is meaning more episodes, more people developing atrial fibrillation. Another common risk factor for developing atrial fibrillation is having had past heart disease. If you've had a heart attack in the past, or you've had something what's called congestive heart failure, or you've had surgery in your heart in the past, those are all risk factors for eventually developing atrial fibrillation. And again, thanks to modern medicine, people are surviving heart attacks, they are surviving longer with congestive heart failure than ever before because of all the advances in medications and treatments for congestive heart failure. People who have had surgery on their heart are doing well and living for decades to come. And so living longer after already having heart disease uh, increases your risk for atrial fibrillation. Also even simple risk factors like diabetes and high blood pressure. The medications are getting better so people are living longer with these conditions. AFib, to kind of explain it simply, is a bit of a disease of wear and tear on your heart and on your body. As the years go by, uh, whether it's you've had heart disease in the past or just a natural process of aging, you get more scar tissue inside of your heart, particularly in your atrium. They become more dilated and these end up leading to more episodes of atrial fibrillation. So it's good that people are living longer and they're surviving heart disease and they're living longer with heart disease. That is all good. But the bad part is that it is, it is increasing the amount of people who are having atrial fibrillation because it, as, like I said, in essence, AFib is a disease of the wear and tear of your heart that comes from other conditions. So that's a lot of the reasons why more people are getting atrial fibrillation. But what this doesn't explain, and something that even I would say that I don't really understand why this is happening or don't know why the, this is happening and what the answer is to this, but there's also more people having atrial fibrillation who are younger. Um, I'm seeing more people with atrial fibrillation who are in their 30s and 40s, and it's not rare, but I have had one or two even in their 20s that have had atrial fibrillation, which would have been extremely unusual 10 years ago to see such young people with atrial fibrillation. And so why are even younger people also getting atrial fibrillation? And I don't think that there is an answer out there right now. Um, some of it can certainly be genetics. Um, there, most people that are younger who have atrial fibrillation do have a pretty strong family history. Uh, obesity is a risk factor for having atrial fibrillation. So whether obesity affects getting atrial fibrillation in a younger patient population, that certainly is a possibility. <laughs> but I've had younger people who have had AFib who are not obese and do not have a family history. 
So I think that there are certain things that we just still don't understand, whether it's the genetics of it, whether there's something going on in people's lives and lifestyles now that, that uh, are affecting the quality of our health and, and affecting uh, people getting AFib at even younger ages. And so this, I think this is something that I look forward to seeing more data about because having AFib at a younger age could mean decades of treatment and monitoring. And so we need to understand better, especially in this younger patient population, why is this happening to them and how can we better uh, manage it and protect them for the long term. And I, I think that's something that still needs to be understood and I look forward to seeing more data and research about those topics. But AFib is growing and we need to accept that it's here and we need to be vigilant about treatment strategies for not only the short term but also for the long term for several patients. Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'll see you next time.